Good day, everyone. So now uh, we're back to the continuation of our discussion. And last time we have setting objectives. Now we will be having the scaffolding techniques wherein I will be discussing to you the different definitions of scaffolding, the different examples and the manifestations wherein it should be used. So hopefully you stay with me throughout our lecture. To continue, we have uh, Vygotsky. He is Lev Semenyovich uh, Vygotsky and he was a Soviet psychologist known for his work on psychological development in children. And scaffolding is hidden on the principle of zone of proximal development and Vygotsky is the one who created or formulated the ZPD theory. How it works? So here we have uh, the zone of actual development. What is not known? Then the zone of proximal development is what is not known but can be done with the guidance and assistance. So here we have example. Um, cannot ride a bike? Then can ride a bike with guidance and assistance. And last, can ride a bike. So it follows a sequence or a process. We're in uh, the first stage is getting ready. And it was followed by showing me how, then help me do it, let me do it myself, and the last is what did I learn. So from the zone of actual development or what is not known, we will be advancing to the level of independence of what has been learned or the knowledge and skills gained. That is how scaffolding works. As stated here, scaffolding is an instructional technique whereby the teacher models the desired learning strategy or test, then gradually shifts the responsibility to the students. As you can see on the picture, the main role of the teacher is to provide scaffolding or assistance to the learners by modeling, showing how it works, and guiding how the learners would do the task. And at the end, uh, we could come up with the acquisition of knowledge and skills from what has been taught. So that is instructional scaffolding. May we also capitalize on the content-based instruction. So here are the steps and it is applicable on procedural scaffolding wherein uh, we focus on the skills or the performance test or in a student who might find it difficult to perform a task with the help of procedural scaffolding can already do the task given to him. So it also follows the following steps. So it can be applied to whole class, small group, partners, or even individual. On the first step, uh, our goal is to increase independency. First, teachers teach, of course. Um, give the theoretical underpinnings under it and some of orientation and discussion of steps then the teacher might model or show how it could be done and then the teacher will be showing the actual process and the teacher will also provide ample time for the learners to practice what they have learned from the modeling and the last part is the application wherein there is a minimum supervision already. The teachers just merely facilitate what's happening during the skills application wherein the learners can do the test alone. So one of the best examples for this is teaching students how to deliver a specific performance test activity. To continue, we will be having the content-based instruction steps. Of course, the first step is to develop lessons or lesson plans to structure the lesson so that uh, 
it transitions from what the students already know to acquiring new concepts. So this is uh, the concept of contra uh, constructivism wherein um, we could build through the schema of the learners. What the learners already know and what they still wanted to learn as well as how and what are the new concepts that they will be learning. So that would be the bridging between the schema and the actual learnings. And then we have the second step, the execution of the lesson plan. Uh, it takes place and every step involves the support of the teacher because in content-based instruction, scaffolding is also applied where in the teachers do not leave the learners after giving the concept. So there's a demonstration as well as the guidance until the student can do the test alone. Next, I will be showing you the different scaffolding techniques. So we have here the Think Aloud. Think Aloud takes place in a controlled setting where the students are directed by a series of questions to think about and answer while reading. So here, um, it has something to do with brainstorming as well, wherein the students have to voice out whatever is in their mind. But the difference is, we provide them questions. So in this question, they have to speak out what's on their mind. So that is what Think Aloud is. As they think, uh, they vocalize or they express it uh, with their other classmates. And also, um, we can pre-teach vocabulary. So, vocabulary words should be introduced in context while associating them with the things that the students already know and find interesting. So, here... Um, it is not just, you know, the words. The learners must also know how to contextualize because words have different meanings depending on the context of the situation. So with the learnings or with the knowledge of identifying the appropriate meaning of words, they could easily understand what's on the text. So that is also another way on how we can scaffold. Uh, we have the term... Um, paghawi ng sagabal in Filipino wherein uh, we unlock difficulties and we teach them how to understand different words according, according to varied situations. Next is the Think Pair Share wherein uh, it is a co cooperative test or a discussion strategy that involves three steps. Of course, the first step is to think, the second step is to pair, and the next or the last step is to share. So if you happen to uh, formulate ideas and then you pair it or pair with someone, with a classmate or a peer, and then with that, you are given a time to share it in front of the class or with your other classmates. Then you are doing the think pair share uh, discussion strategy. Then it's also a form of scaffolding technique. Then, um, we will also discuss the use of visual aids because uh, we believe that the use of visual aids uh, is one of the best manifestations of scaffolding or guiding our learners on how they would uh, come up with their realizations and learnings. So, let's define first what visual aids are. So, these are graphic organizers, infographics, charts, and pictures that can serve as effective and interactive scaffolding tools. So it could be in the form of anything that could we visualize or anything that can be perceived by our eyes. So this might help us if we are finding it difficult to apprehend or comprehend textual uh, representations or textual materials. So with the aid of drawings, graphics, pictures, or anything that we can visualize, we can easily understand what the text is telling us. Be showing us the different examples of visual aids. So we have here the anticipation uh, reaction guide. We have here the 
uh, semantic maps, proposition support outline, then structured note taking to have story frame, then we have uh, reading aids. The plot diagramming, yes, of course. We have reciprocal teaching on, then we also have the raft. Then uh, we will also have the what I know, what I do not know, and what I wanted to learn. So then we have the learning log, of course, the discussion web. Then we will also have the directed reading thinking activity and Freyer model, of course. Um, the probable passages, also a form of visual aid in the concept map uh, stipulated here, then character map, the pre-reading chart, um, yes, additional figure model as you can depict on the pictures that I am uh, showing. That would be all for today, class. I hope you have learned a lot from our discussion. So, with that, thank you and mabuhay. So, this is Teacher Jen and let us see each other on the next meeting with additional learnings.